So I am on my way to an APA New York event. That is the American Photographic Artists New York chapter, which is a nonprofit organization that helps out photographers with resources, everything they need, legal, technique, business advice, whatever it is, they know they have a destination for resources. And APA New York today is doing a workshop that is for aspiring photographers that want to work as assistants. How can they do that? How can they get better at it? What do they do? How do they get into it? So a bunch of my colleagues are teaching segments of a workshop there. I was asked to do it, but I only had a few days notice. So they also said that there was uh, a panel at the end of the day. Well, I can make that. So I'm actually running from one job over to there so I can go be part of it. And nobody's getting paid for this. This is just to get these kids off and running and to give back, right? So my buddy, Daniel Norton, Cliff House, the legend, Teresa Raffetto, veteran of the game, Joe Sinnott, all these people are there to teach different aspects of studio commercial photography. And then we're gonna do that panel at the end with a Q and A that I'll be a part of to moderate. So I thought I'd take you guys with me. Train's coming, so uh, let me jump on this and I'll pick it up when I get there. So I pulled the one and only Cliff Housen with me. Look at this mean mug. Look at this guy. He looks just like Hawk from Road Warriors. Go ahead and tell him down below. He doesn't even know who that is. I, don't, I have no idea. This is the legendary Cliff. You've seen him on my channel before. You've seen him all over at Rama TV. But this is pretty much what the industry is about, community. Without community, there is no industry. So me and Cliff believe in paying it forward. You've been doing it nonstop. And you're always bringing people onto your sets as new assistants. So I guess this is kind of like your precursor to finding the next crop, huh? Right, exactly. So I came to this event today expecting to do just hands-on and working with some people, teach them a little bit about lighting. And I, I think I found a couple of new assistants, um, really, really solid people. Uh, they know both lighting and they know, uh, they know our product. So it's great for me. And then time I go out and do a shoot, I have a bunch of people now to pick from. So pretty excited about it. Yeah, I think it's uh, assisting was the greatest thing for me personally when I was trying to figure out how to do this as a career. Mm -hmm. What would you say to someone that's trying to find their in at being an assistant for someone that they want to assist for? I think it just, you have to recognize and know their work really well. Um, and then and then do your best to just get in touch with them and try to figure out a way either get in touch with their first assistant their second assistant get in touch with them and uh, and just let them know how much you like their work and how much you want to be a part of what they're doing. You know, one of the things that surprised me here was nobody was on their phone. They were all like taking notes and actually in it. Absolutely. Were you not shocked by this? No, no, I was totally shocked. Um, I think Howard Schatz came up and he did a little talk in the very beginning. And he said, uh, he said, the one thing on set is that you should never have your phone out. And I saw a couple of people take their phone and put it away. But prior to that, there was very few of them that had it out anyway. Yeah, I, you know, I always hear in like the comments that people like, oh, the industry is this, it's dead, blah, blah. I got to tell you, after today, it feels pretty alive. This next right. gen looks pretty cranking. They were, I mean, the notes, there was like notes after notes, like the pack, the unbelievable. The questions, great questions, that, solid good questions about things that I, I wouldn't have even thought to ask as an assistant, but um, they're, they're really solid good questions. And the people that, uh, the way they brought it to us and the way they presented themselves was very, very professional. Yeah, so Cliff was here showing them lighting while I was showing them grip. I didn't mean to show them grip. I got thrown in here last minute because Daniel Norton, unfortunately, couldn't make it. He was having a bit of a health issue. Hope you're better, buddy. Uh, but I think this is just what we do, Cliff. We always end up in the same situations. We have fun. We don't enjoy ourselves, man. We, we have a great time. If I you, loved it. If you guys don't know Cliff, he literally is a legend. I love this guy. He's like the industry's uncle for sure. <laughs> uh, check. I'll put his social down below. Okay, buddy. Thank you. Thanks all. All right, so I just pulled Joe aside because he was one of the guys instructing today. I didn't expect to go hands-on, but we all just jumped into it. You actually do teach photography do. as a class. Where do you do it? What do you think is going on with the next generations? Are you hopeful? Do you think it's like we're in a good place? I, I teach at the School of Visual Arts, which I love doing. Uh, and yeah, I'm always hopeful. I, don't, I can't think of any time teaching in the last 30 years where I, I looked at any particular generation of students and said, uh-oh, it's all gone horribly wrong. Every group, every generation, they come in with different priorities and different expectations, different hopes and dreams, different wants. And they, like the industry changes, so their interests change. Their job isn't to change their interests. Our job is to teach things that they need to know. Right. Some of those are things they want to know. Some of the, those things are things they may not want to know, but I'm, I never feel badly about the prospects of the industry. I'm never worried about the people wanting to get into the industry. 
I always feel weird about the comments I get, like, oh, the industry's dying. I haven't seen this work. And so, like, what do you say to that I, stuff? I, I hear that all the time, too. I've been hearing it my entire life. Same. And, you know, like, from the time that I took pictures <laughs> fighting dinosaurs from the back of my covered wagon to now, I've been hearing about how it's all over but the crying. I, I'm making as good a living as I've ever made. I like the work. I'm working with clients I really like. I'm doing interesting things. I, I, I have to think that at various inflection points when the business changes a lot and there are people that struggle with that transition, it, it seems sort of hopeless and as though the whole industry is going to hell for those people. Yeah, I find people just don't want to assimilate or they don't realize that I think our industry in general changes in so many ways so quickly from the platforms we publish to, to the people that hire us, to the type of media they want produced and things like that. And if you're not ready to evolve yourself and you're just stuck in going, well, why is anyone coming to me? I think that's your first problem. But when has it ever been the case that you should expect clients to come to us? Yeah. Like, like building markets, every business has to do that. Every business has to do that. There, were, there was no such thing as a smartphone market before the iPhone. Like, Apple created that market. Creating markets, expanding markets, that's the job of anybody who's in business. So what would you say is your number one tip to get into the game if you're someone like these kids that were here? I was socked. They were all, like, taking notes and stuff. Nobody was on their phones. They were in it, bro. I, the same advice that I've been giving to students for forever. The thing that worked for me is I wanted it more than other people and I behaved that way. I, I kept swinging. I, I, did not, I did not let the discouraging things drag me down. I got criticism. I, I took the good advice. I ignored the bad advice. I tried to figure out the difference between good and bad advice. The, but the, I get to do it because I wanted it more than other people and I behaved that way. And I kept swinging, and I kept swinging, and I kept swinging, and it was desperate and hard. I still kept swinging. That, like, that's been good advice for me my whole life. It's the same advice I give other people now. I just had somebody here at this event who actually was one of my students who spit that advice back at me because yeah. they remembered it. I, yeah, I always say. And, and in what business is it bad advice? You want to succeed at it? behave like you want it more than other people. Oh, what do you know? You can be a success that way. Huh. Yeah, this is a trade that you definitely have to want it. And you, I always say you create your own opportunities in this game. And that's what freelance is, man. So I don't know, what, what would you say would be the best way to get yourself in as an assistant to get going? How would you go about contacting photographers you want to work for? Uh, I, I got one weird piece of advice that might have limited utility in, <laughs> in the modern world. But like usually the easiest way to get people's attention is do something very different. I get 200 emails a week. Not all of them are emails I want. Everything that shows up in my mailbox gets opened, which is like a weird thing to suggest. It, like it's just one idea for do something different. Tell like, you, it, it sounds dumb, but you write a letter, you put a stamp on it saying like, this is me, this is my resume, this is, this is what I think I can do for you. Try not to talk about what you do. Try to talk about what you can do for other people. You never know. It, like, that's the only thing I got off the top of my head. And I realize it could be the worst advice of the week. But it's not expensive advice to try. He's got a lot of advice. And he actually did a live stream at the Admiral Event Space. I'm going to put a link down below to that uh, live stream. And uh, you can go check out what Joe's all about. Aside from being absolutely out of his mind. <laughs> I'm a little bit out of my mind. Not totally out of your mind. I'm getting out of here. <laughs> so it wasn't all gear and tech stuff. Teresa taught the most important class, I think, which was business. And, and Teresa also is one of the people behind producing all the events at Adorama. She's putting, she takes me and organizes all of it. So, <laughs> so a big job. It's a massive job, but we work well together and, and all the trade shows and stuff. But what was this event about for you? I mean, I haven't even seen you speak in a while. You decided to dust off the mic and get going, which is crazy. Right. That's right. I haven't done this since probably 2015. I used to go to all the schools and talk to the students about assisting. Like, what's assistant etiquette? How do you get going? Uh, how do you balance when you start shooting and you're still assisting? Uh, That's a good one, actually. Yeah, really good. Um, you know sitting down with your accountant and getting set up with estimated taxes if you're freelance. This is too grown up. 
putting 20% of your paycheck, every paycheck into a savings account, like all nice little nuggets that every assistant should know. Well, what was it about this event? Because I'm not kidding. I haven't seen you talk in forever. And you were like, oh, I'm doing something. I was like, what? Wait, Teresa? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I love APA. I've been a member of APA since I was an assistant. I've been national president, chapter co-chair, chapter treasurer. And they do good work. And Debbie asked, and I said, I am here for you. That's crazy. So now I have to talk her into doing stuff at Adorama event space because now she got the bug. Now I got the bug. <laughs> <laughs> good. I can take some days off. What, what would be the number one advice you'd give to people starting out? Because I think business-wise, I wish I learned more because oh. um, I've made so many mistakes and I probably could have been in a different places, different points in my life. What would you, what'd you say is the one key advice on, on just keeping yourself stable that way? Yeah, I would say join a photo organization. There's two in New York, APA and ASMP. Go to some of their events, see what you think, see how you feel, join the one that feels the best for you, then take advantage of that membership. Go to the events, meet other assistants, meet photographers, get all the information on copyright and licensing. I mean, they're a wealth of knowledge and these organizations are doing the behind the scenes work to protect our copyright. Now we've got AI coming in and what's that gonna mean? You know, they're on it. They're in Washington doing the hard work. It's a great, a great value for the low bit of money you have to pay for your dues. Yeah, it, you definitely create your own opportunities. I keep saying that to you guys. And I definitely think this industry is nothing without a community, which is us. 100%. But there's also a lot of resources just sitting there for all of us. And I don't think a lot of you know about it. So hopefully this got you guys open up to a world that you didn't even think that existed out there. Because I think a lot of us sit by ourselves with a camera and go, why, Lonely how? Lonely business, yes. So uh, I'll put, um, should I put your socials down below? Sure. Sure. We'll put Teresa's socials down below. But Seriously, Adorama events, all the stuff. If you're ever at a trade show, just say what's up to Teresa because I'm, take, I'm taking her into the game. She, she can't go back now. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> all right, I'm going to call it there. So, yeah, this is what can happen in your area if you find the organizations that help out with the resources you're trying to find. I didn't expect to be doing a hands-on workshop, let alone doing four demos on C-stands and grips, but... Uh, <sighs> Dan Norton got sick. I hope he's better. Uh, he would be here for sure. I know he would, and he would love every second of it. But think about giving back in your world. Pay it forward. And look for the organizations in your world that give you the resources for whatever you're trying to get into. Not just photo, but there are things like this for everything out there. Just go look for them and take advantage of those resources, all right? I'm going to get out of here. If you're new here, go ahead and subscribe. We do all sorts of videos on photo, video, lighting, content creation, all the nerd stuff. And uh, I will see you on the next one. But don't forget, you can join the Discord down below if you are looking for something to hang out virtually 24-7, 365. It's down there, the link to the Discord for people just like you, asking questions, troubleshooting, sharing gear, stories, work, all sorts of stuff. Anyway, let me get out of here. They're kicking us all out because they are officially painting that psych wall behind us. Bathhouse Studios is dope. If you're in New York, check them out. And I will see you on the next one. Later, guys.